Well, howdy friends, Brian Fleshing, and welcome back to our YouTube channel. Tonight I'm going to walk you through a really simple bait fish pattern, but using some uh, kind of new stuff from uh, especially these new fish masks from Flyman Fly Fishing Company. So I'll show you how to use those. But before we get started, let me walk you through all the materials that we're going to use. And remember, you can always go to our fly tying blog and get a list of the materials used in each episode, as well as uh, photographic instructions, as well as um, the tutorials here. Uh, but the hook I'm going to use is the Gamakatsu B10S Stinger Hook. If you're not familiar with this hook, this is one badass hook. I mean, you, you, nothing you can't catch on this B10S. In fact, we designed for primarily for bass fishing. They call it a stinger hook for uh, making bass bugs and such, but we're also using them in salt water a lot too. It's, they don't make hooks better than the Gamakatsu B10S. Um, I'm going to use some Arctic Fox tail hair, which I absolutely love this stuff. I'm using it for a ton of my bait fish patterns, a lot of my salt water patterns. I'm going to top that with some fin raccoon, which is a very similar type of fur. Uh, you'll see this stuff a lot. You see it a lot in salmon and steelhead tying these days, and uh, you'll see it a lot in the Mad River Outfitter stuff. We love this stuff. I'm going to add a little bit of crystal flash. Um, I'm going to put an uh, overwing of ice wing fiber on this fly. And then, of course, the showpiece, what really makes this fly is the fish masks from Flyman Fly Fishing Company. These things, as you saw in a previous tutorial that we, we did, these allow you to create the head of a streamer as opposed to using epoxy. Um, and it's a lot easier. You'll be amazed at how easy it is. And then it also has little spaces in there for me to insert the eyes. Flyman Fly Fishing Company also offers a selection of very realistic what they call living eyes. And these things are really prismatic and really look like fish eyes. Uh, they come in a variety of different colors. I'm going to be using wind tonight because I'm tying up a little baby bass or baby smallmouth or, or even a um, goby type pattern that we get here in the Lake Erie region. So the wind color and these match up in size. These are the 7.0 millimeters and it'll tell you on the pack of the fish mask what size eyes um, these will accept. But they make these in, in earth, wind, fire, and ice. And of course you can find those on our website or on the blog and take a look at the different colors. But of course different fish have different color eyes and this allows you to create a really, really neat looking bait fish pattern. So let's get started and I'll walk you through. Again, this is really simple, nothing complicated here. I think you'll really like this um, because it's just super, super simple. And you could take this uh, or a variation of it and, and add your own stuff to it and your own materials. But of course, my most important piece of gear right there, my click goggles. But I'm going to start my thread as I do with any fly pattern. And I'm just going to wrap thread around the, the shank of the hook. And I'm going to, just for the sake of uh, getting you through this as quickly as possible, I'm not going to add any type of body to this. If you wanted to, you could really simply just wrap some chenille, some sparkle chenille, virtually anything you wanted, but we're going to jump right into the, the wing on this fly. And I'm going to use the Arctic Fox for the belly. Of course, all bait fish are light on the underside and dark on the top. So I'm going to grab a hunk of, of this Arctic Fox tail and put a belly on this fly. Just lay it back for approximately how long I want it to be. Remember that the, uh, the topping that will go over top will be a little bit longer. But real simple, I'm just going to make a cut stroke out some of the kind of that thick under fur down there and I'm just going to lay this wing right on top of the hook shank of course using the pinch method. And then it's not a bad idea all fish have lateral lines and I'm going to go ahead and use crystal flash to kind of give a black lateral line to this fly. Here's a cool trick too by the way I don't know if I've showed this to, shown this to you before um, but when you buy a pack of crystal flash 
instead of pulling it out of the package and having it uh, get all tangled up and having it a mess all over the place, I can just cut either the corner off of this package or a little triangle in it. And that allows me to stick my scissor points inside that package and just pull off the number of strands that I want. And then when I go to put it away, it's not loose and getting tangled up with other materials. Anybody that's ever tried to pull a, a, a massive tangled crystal flash out of, their, out of their fly tying materials knows what I'm talking about. So I'll grab about four or five strands, nothing set in stone, and I'm going to add a lateral line. And I'm simply going to lay it in position on top of the white arctic fox I just laid on there. I'm going to take a couple of wraps forward towards the eye and then I can fold it backwards and then wrap my thread back over it. That's going to double the amount I just used, trim it similar to the other and I just maximized uh, that use of that crystal flash there. So I'm going to put just an overwing of some olive, just some ba basic olive uh, fin raccoon. And I like the, the fin raccoon. It's a little finer, a little wispier of, a, of a, a hair or fur than the Arctic fox. The Arctic fox makes a really good belly, uh, underbelly to that fly. And then I'm going to lay the overwing. And this looks like a piece of Arctic, or excuse me, fin raccoon that my dog could have gotten a hold of. Uh, he loves this stuff. But um, I'll just grab a hank of that, kind of measure where I want it to be. I want it to be a little bit longer. You're typically going to want the overwing to be a little bit longer than the underwing, or in this case, the belly. I'm going to trim that, and I'm just going to tie it in. Nothing fancy, just lay it right on top of the white. And you'll notice I'm not, I'm not going really heavy on this stuff. It's really pretty sparse. That's going to allow, especially once this gets wet, you might not be able to see that black lateral line, but once this thing gets wet and starts going through the water, don't worry, they'll be able to see it and get the idea. And then I'm going to take a little bit of ice wing fiber. That just gives a little bit of flash and it's going to put a real good dark topping to this fly. And this stuff is kind of challenging at times to work with, but one of the secrets of it, I just I pull it out and I'm going to double it over. And by doubling it over, I kind of give myself a really good point to tie in. And then I'm just going to stroke out some of these fibers. And you can actually set them aside because I can just jam it back in the, in the pouch after I'm done here. And I lay that on top, pull out some of these strays, and that's going to give me some flash, and it's going to give me a nice dark overwing, which again, most of your bait fish, their bellies are going to be light colored and their backs are going to be dark. So I lay that overwing in there and grab it with my fly tying thread and tie it down. Okay, Nothing fancy. I may come in with my scissors. I never want to cut natural materials. So I would never trim the fin raccoon or I would never trim uh, the arctic fox. But with a synthetic like that ice wing fiber, I can come in and trim some of those strays just to clean it up a little bit. And boom. Easy bait fish. Now, in, in past years, if I wanted to really create a really durable head, I might get some epoxy like your, uh, um, uh, like your clear cure goo these days is really popular or a five minute epoxy back in the old days. Okay, so I've just finished this fly and uh, you know, quite frankly, it fits pretty well just as it is. Uh, but we're gonna add that little extra touch. Of course, eyes on any streamer can make a difference. Um, and I used to have to put epoxy heads on here and then attach the eyes to them, whether you're using clear cure goo or five minute epoxy or whatever. But I'm gonna show you uh, what this episode is really about and that's about these fish masks from Flyman Fly Fishing Company. Now in a previous episode, I showed you how to, to dye these things. They come clear in color, but you can use your Copic airbrush set to color these things 
uh, any color that you want. Um, and I've obviously made these olive. I do this prior to tying the fly and let set them aside to dry. And what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of glue on the head of this fly, a little bit of Zapigap on there, and that's going to help hold the, the fish mask in place. And then all I do is slide this thing over the head of the fly into position and allow that glue to dry. Now I'm going to slide it back a little bit and boom, my fish mask is in place. Okay. They make these in a variety of different sizes. Um, and then of course the eyes then just stick right on the sides of the fish mask and they've got little spaces in there which you'll see in the close-ups. And I'm going with the wind color which is the one, this would make a great little baby smallmouth pattern or baby bass pattern. Um, and all you do is lay those on the sides so I can move my vise. I'm going to put just a little drop of glue, a little drop of Zapigap will help keep that in place and pretty much make it permanent. And I'm going to install that eye. And these are very, very realistic eyes. Again, they're called living eyes from the Flyman Fly Fishing Company. Put that eye in place. Little drop of glue here. Get an, peel another eye off there. Put that into place. Just kind of hold them for a second. And you give that just a few minutes to dry. And you see that that flyman head just made that fly. Nothing special about what I just did there with Arctic Fox, Fin Raccoon, a little bit of flash in there. But you put that thing in the water, and all of a sudden now those eyes make this fly come alive. You put that in the water, and the Arctic Fox and the Fin Raccoon move, a little bit of flash to get their attention. And albeit a super simple bait fish, but that um, fish mask from Fly fin, Men Fly Fishing Company, along with their living eyes, really bring a fly to life. So, simple fly brought to life by the fish mask from Fly, fly Men Fly Fishing Company. Super easy to use, uh, and use your imagination. Take what, whatever streamers you used to try and, and try to incorporate these fish masks, see what you come up with. Thanks for joining us. Remember, you can always get onto our fly tying blog and get instructions on these and many other patterns, as well as the ingredients that we use for each of these flies. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.